I feel like I say this every week, but just wow. What an episode of television that was. I actually think that Masters of the Air is probably the best show that's out there at the moment, and this episode proved exactly why. I'll get into that in the review part of the video, but pff, it never fails to blow me away. This episode of Masters of the Air was different to the others that came before it, as there was no action that was taking place in the air at all. Instead, we had three separate stories going on, and we picked up with them throughout the runtime of the episode. This was Bucky landing in Germany and trying to avoid being spotted, Crosby in Oxford at a conference so his mind could be taken away from the death of Bubbles, and also Rosenthal at the Flack House, with what I would describe as one of the best episodes in the season. Let's jump into the video and break down all that there was to take away from it. Here is Masters of the Air Episode 6 Ending Explained. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. I'll break this video down by the three different journeys that we followed to make it easier to digest. Bucky in Germany This episode started out with us seeing Bucky in Germany, and the opening section was simply phenomenal. It was utter silence, and it really drew us in so that we could almost hear what Bucky could hear, and the way that he was trying to go unnoticed. However, he was spotted by a group of German children, and once he lowered his weapon, they shouted, Americana. At that moment, drums kicked in and the whole mood and tone of the scene changed. It was now life or death, and you really felt that in your ears as much as you did in your eyes when watching it. So, massive credit to Blake Neely, who composed the music for this episode. This opening section quite literally had the tension that you often find in horror movies, waiting in that silence before something terrible jumps out and happens. We followed Bucky essentially going from being spotted by a family to then being taken by the authorities where, as he was being transported, he was being walked through a town, and then, once the residents realized that it was American soldiers that were being paraded through, at a site which had just been hit by the RAF, the mood of the town changed and they started attacking them all. This was the first time that we saw the brutality that was going to be carried out up close. An air warden in the town killed the Americans that were there at point-blank range and they believed that they also killed Bucky, but he wasn't dead. He pretended until he got an opportunity where he could run and escape. When he was being transported in the back of the trailer, there was another moment of brutality where the Germans killed an American with a shovel. It was just horrific to look at and you could only imagine the pain. But from there, Bucky managed to escape until he passed out on the floor and was then found and taken to Dulag Luft, which was a prisoner of war transit camp. Bucky was interrogated, but he refused to cooperate and gave no intel whatsoever. During this conversation, there was a toast that Bucky made, which was, here's mud in your eye. For those wondering that haven't heard it, it's just a generic toast that gets made. It's said to have dated back to the late 1890s in American taverns, but there's also theories about it stemming from the Great War when people were in the trenches. Once Bucky left Dulag Luft, he was being forced to get onto a train to the prisoner of war camp, Stalag Luft III. During this scene, there was a shot of a train going past which had people being transported to a concentration camp. This was such a hard-hitting scene. Hearing the screams, people begging for help, the look in their eyes, it just sent shivers down my spine whilst watching it, and the slow-motion shot of it happening only made it even more powerful. That then paired with the killing of an American soldier that tried to run away, it just showed the lack of regard for life and how numb these people were to just killing on the spot. They treated people worse compared to how animals were treated. The fact that they placed the body inside of the carriage as well, it was something that finished it off by just reinforcing how disgusting they were. During the closing moments of the episode, Bucky arrived at the gates to Stalag Luft III, and I didn't really know how to feel. There was a sense of happiness amongst the prisoners because they were seeing people that they were close with who they may have thought were dead. But also, they were in a prison, which meant that they were treated badly and had no way out and could potentially die there. There were smiles on faces whilst in this setting, which just really made my brain feel weird. I totally get why, and I imagine the sense of loneliness for a lot of them would probably be gone when they see a familiar face. And that was something that was most definitely gone for Bucky when Buck was on the other side of the fence and he said to Bucky, what took you so long? According to Bucky himself in real life, that was actually the first thing that Buck said to him when he got there. So Buck and Bucky's time in the air is most definitely done in the show now, so I feel we're going to be watching their story develop from within the fences of the Prisoner of War camp, something which will provide an insight that we've not seen in the show so far. Within this arc as well, there were a couple of interesting moments. For example, there was a scene that was almost mirrored from when Bucky was in London. In London, there was a mother who was carrying her child out of the rubble, which was their home, who had been killed by a bomb. 
And we also saw a similar thing happening in Germany. These are the only two times that we've really seen the effect of the bombing up close and on the street. And it almost showed that no matter what side you're on, there's innocent, young people, mourning mothers of children that get caught up in the devastation that's going on. So I thought those parallel shots were interesting for sure. Crosby in Oxford Crosby's arc was one that I thought was an interesting one to follow. After the opening title sequence, the episode continued with Crosby narrating over the top, a feature that I really like in the show. He mentioned how after only four months, 32 out of the 35 original crew were missing, something which was terrible for the morale and everybody was almost avoiding their ghosts in different ways. Some drank, some didn't talk about it, but others did. With the likes of Crosby, the death that was on his mind and the reason he was in Oxford was so that he could have his mind taken off of the death of his best friend Bubbles. There's something about their relationship where, even though we didn't see it on screen that much, it just breaks my heart when I hear Cros talking about Bubbles. Because you can really feel the weight of the absence that's present in his life now. Seeing the letter from his wife where she closed it off by saying, say hi to Bubbles for me. And also when he was talking with Sandra and he said, he was a good friend, he went down last week before proceeding to blame himself. It was a moment where you really felt what he was going through, and Anthony Boyle is a massive reason for that. What I liked about this arc as well was that it kind of felt like it was leaning in the direction that there might be some kind of romantic spark moment brewing between Harry and Sandra. But it didn't happen, and I'm glad that it felt like that, because Cros seemed like a loyal guy. He wrote to his wife once a week, and she did the same to him. So with him just being uplifted by the presence of Sandra, it showed that that was all that he needed. Harry felt like he was responsible for Bubbles' death due to him taking Bubbles' place as group navigator and planning the route. But by the end of the episode, the burden that he once felt was lifted slightly. There was a lot of mystery around Sandra, and we never found out what it was that she did. But after doing a bit of digging, it seems as though Subalton Alessandra Westgate, who was also known as Sandra Wingate, was a member of the Auxiliary Territorial Service. The last we saw of Harry in this episode was him back at Thorpe Abbott sitting around listening to stories being told. In the narration, it was mentioned that some of them were true, some weren't, but it didn't matter because it was everybody's way of dealing with the ghosts that they were avoiding and giving them the strength to go up in the air again. Rosenthal in the Flack House Rosenthal's perspective was the third one that we had in the episode and it was definitely just as interesting as the others. Even though he was in a flat house where there was rest and relaxation resources around him, we got to take a deep dive inside of his mind. He didn't feel like that environment was the best for him due to the fact that he didn't agree with disrupting the rhythm that he got into, and also being looked after whilst there were people getting up in the air and risking their lives. He said the line, you don't talk about it, you don't cry about it, you get back in your seat and finish the job. Something which was probably more telling of the mindset of the time, but one that showed how determined he was. Dr. Houston said how human beings weren't supposed to act the way that they were, but Rosenthal said because people were being persecuted and subjugated, he felt as though he had to do something and wanted to do something. I liked the concept of rhythm being brought into this because that was something which carried right the way through to the end. Rosenthal spoke to Dr. Houston about him feeling as though because he had done three and three missions, he felt like he'd now be grinded to a halt and it wouldn't be good for him. He compared himself to a drum keeping rhythm, but the doctor came back and mentioned how a drummer's responsibility is to keep the rhythm for the entire band, not just himself. Right at the end of the episode, the mission over Munster was brought up in conversation, and we heard how when they were the only plane left in the sky and they knew that the Germans would be coming towards them, the crew on board heard Rosenthal humming through the cans and they found comfort in hearing that, knowing that they weren't alone in a moment where they didn't know if they were going to live or die. That was Rosenthal being the drummer of the band, keeping everyone together, in time, and ensuring that they were all okay. With Rosie also putting his hand on the shoulder, it showed the togetherness that was there for him. I think the break did Rosie good. We saw him smiling more towards the end and actually socializing, compared to when he first got there and outrightly didn't want to be there. There was a moment where it seemed as though he was questioning getting back into the plane when he got there, him feeling like his rhythm was disrupted. But in time with the drums that started playing underneath, which synced up with him tapping his fingers, he did exactly what he said earlier. He got back in the plane and was ready to finish the job, showing that he was the drummer and was prepared to keep the rhythm of the entire crew. Overall review. I genuinely thought this was one of the best episodes in the show. I know it didn't have a lot of camaraderie and I know it didn't have anything going on in the air, but what I did like about it was the deep dive that we got inside of their minds. Buck's journey was one that was so haunting to watch and it was like a horror film. 
But obviously, it was real. This showed us for the first time in the show, ground in Germany and the devastation that was taking place. We've not heard from Quinn in quite a few episodes now and I don't remember seeing him in the trailer for next week, so I do wonder how and when that story is going to get picked up because it feels like it was only just getting started. Like I said in the previous sections, the sound in this episode was some of the best that it's been. Its way of matching emotion and purely suiting the scenes was simply incredible. It thrived in the scenes with Bucky too. I can't think of a better show that's out there at the moment. When I go on my channel and look at what I'm covering, there isn't a show that's up there like this recently with the terms of the performances, the quality of writing, and the way that it looks. It's just an all-round great show. It's emotionally moving. Seeing Buck appear at the end, that was a moment which was so nice to watch. And seeing Bucky have a smile on his face at the end of an episode where he came close to death on a countless number of occasions, it was just a moment to soak up, even though he was nowhere near safe. I'm really enjoying this show and I can't believe we've only got three episodes left. It's one that I feel like I could just keep on watching, so it will be a shame when it finishes. For now though, I'm going to savor those last three episodes when they get released. So, there you have it. Masters of the Air Episode 6 Ending Explained